talking about the Arabs and the Muslims and all of that that live in America. Which that's BS, that's bogus. What this is talking about is that this what's written in Isaiah 13. What we, Isaiah 13, brother. Um, stop in verse, um, stop in verse 10. Isaiah 13 and 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. So we'll read all the way down to 15. Start at 15. Yeah, start at 15. Yeah. I, you know where it talks about, um, it speaks about the desert creatures. This is uh, I, Isaiah 10 and 15. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Yeah. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Right. So in other words, destruction is going to take place. But we're gonna we're gonna break this whole thing down in the book of Revelations, the 18th chapter. Because what we're talking about, right? Or well, mo well, mostly what we should be talking about is prophecies. Because there's power in prophecy. I want to explain the power in prophecy. Now, prophecy or or are events that are going to take place that no man can alter or change. No matter how much they try to protest if this happened or whatever the case may be, they can't change it because this is something or an event that's definitively going to come to pass. And that's why, um, that's why you can see, just based on what I'm saying, you can see the importance of, of what it means to, to deal with prophecy. Now you may have people, they may have their own different opinions on, on, on the prophecy. They may agree or they disagree. But one thing they can't do is they can't alter that current event that's going to take place. You see, so that's why I said we got to really be, and really, beginning with the apostles, they're bringing this, the spirit of, of, of um, they're bringing that spirit out on letting brothers pretty much focus on prophecy. Because that's what this whole thing is about. All right, it's all about the prophecies. All of this other talk, yeah, we can talk about feminism and all this other stuff. That's all, you know, good and done yet in some cases. But the main thing that we got to do is are the things that are going to take place. Go and read that. So uh, I found the first one. All right, yeah, did that. So it's uh, Isaiah 13 and 19. Right. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child deeds, Excellency yeah. shall be as when the most high overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, it's going to be in, in similar matter because how was um, ancient Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed? By those brimstones. And it pelted the city. So, what's going to be interchangeable with those brimstones? The nuclear missiles. When those missiles hit ground zero on the landmass of America, it's not going to be any more. It's going to be a desert. That's right. This is why, as we read in, in the book of Isaiah 13, it explains kind of creatures that's going to inhabit that land. But that's going to pretty much take over that land. Okay, it's going to be a no man's land. Pretty much no uh, Verse 20. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Or neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. Right, so it says, but the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there because it's going to be a desert. When you go to America, you have cars going up and down the street, just like how you have it down here. You got buses going up, going up and down the street, school buses, all kind of activity going on. Musicians, all right? And when it's all said and done, when those missiles pelt the city, like how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, it's not going to be no more. That's right. It's just going to be a, a, a bland desert. Read that. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, mm -hmm. and the houses shall be full of doleful creatures. Uh -huh. And owls shall dwell there, and the satyrs shall dance there. Right, so you're going to have desert creatures that's going to inhabit that land. All right, as a whole. So now we're going to get back to Revelation 18. Uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, mm. is fallen and has become the habitation of devils. Now the word Babylon, now the word, as I'm saying in America, you're not going to find America in the Bible. What you're going to find is this, this code name, and the code name of America is Babylon the great, or, or daughter of Babylon. Because why is this, why, why does um, John the Revelator refer to the society, okay, or the future that was going to, that was going to come after him as Babylon? Because this this particular kingdom or empire will resurrect itself and amalgamate all of the different 
deities and gods and philosophies of the ancient world. All right, therefore fusing all of these um these um philosophies together, all these worshiping these different gods of the ancient world, which the word Babylon means confusion. The word confusion means to mix together. So what are they mixing together? They're mixing all of their all of the paganistic gods of the past. All right, go on. It's fallen and it's become the habitation of devils right. and the hold of every foul spirit. So what is that talking about? We just read it in Isaiah 13 and now um, what is it? 21, right? About those doleful creatures. Those desert-like creatures. So that's what it means that the devils are going to inhabit the land in what? In a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. In a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So these ain't talking about people. That's going to have the spirit of the devil. This is talking about actual creatures that's going to inhabit that land. Go on, baby. And it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, yep. and the merchants of the earth are wet rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, yeah. that ye be not partaken of her sins and that he received not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto... Say what, brother? Read up the verse. Verse 3, Revelation 18, verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, right. and the merchants of the earth are wet rich. So how is this being, how is this being done? Because I have an article dealing with on how you have certain countries that, um, that like, you know, the American democracy, and they, they take hold of that. All right, because America is is a uh, I mean, it's not it's not the most uh, what is it? It's not the, the global power Britain is, but America is the most influential, which back which backs up prophecy, which indicates and in, declares in that this old daughter of Babylon, which ought to be destroyed, is America today. Because when you read up when you read the prophecy. In Revelation 18, it talks about how this particular kingdom, or daughter of Babylon, will influence the world. So let's read that one more time, and I'm going to read this. Uh, Revelation 18, verse 3. No, no, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Right. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Because what is her fornication? Based on those, based based on the philosophies that America is teaching, which transgresses the natural order of, of of how the Most High set things up to be. When you read the Book of Isaiah 24, it says um something to the effect of, matter of fact, brother, you might as well read it. Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah 24. <coughs> you know the kind of wisdom that America pushes to the world is 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 wisdom that pretty much goes against wisdom of righteousness. Like for example, we can even deal with the celebrities. They may promote homosexuality. They may promote order and influence the world by that being the case. And other things they promote out there. Things that are not right. Okay, so yeah, read that, brother. They'll change the ordinance and the everlasting covenant. Isaiah 24 and 7. The new wine horn of wine languisheth, all the very hard to do besides. No, no, no. Um, it talks about, um, it says something to the effect of, I just said it. Yeah. In the everlasting covenant. Try verse 2. Isaiah 24 and 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants. There you go. That's the exact piece about wanting. So it says that the whole earth is defiled because of what? The inhabitants of the earth. So who are these inhabitants of the earth? Who are these men that grew and dominate the planet today? The Edomites. Right. Beginning with the British and also the Americans. So based on America being the influence of the world, right? Based on their media, they program the minds of the people. And when you look up the word media, the word media 
goes back to a uh, believe is a uh, a Greek god, the Greek female god of believers, which means the seven. Okay, so they use this, they call this too, or the um the idiot box media. Alright? Mm. Because the word media goes back to what is it to deceive? Going back to that God. And that's exactly why the people are on the the transit they're under right now. Alright? Because they've been influenced by Esau's propaganda, stemming all the way back to Babylon the Great. Go on, bro. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken, it's like you've broken the everlasting covenant. Right, they have transgressed the laws. That's all I wanted to so yeah, read that. Revelation chapter 18, <coughs> uh, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not her plagues. Yeah. Her uh, sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquity. Right, as we just read. So I want to read this right here. It says, a new study conducted by the Euro-Asia Youth Foundation, EGF, has produced interesting findings on public attitudes in other countries towards the U.S. and a system of government based on surveys of citizens in eight countries, Brazil, China, Egypt, India, Nigeria, Poland, Germany, in Japan, the reports authored by Mark Hanna found support in all these countries for democracy, but mixed attitude towards the U.S. and its democracy. A few interesting data points. Brazilians appear disappointed with their own democracy, but some 70% have favorable views of American ideas of democracy. Because every country has their own level of democracy. All right, but Brazil, 70% of the people in Brazil, they favor the idea of the American democracy, which again ties into prophecy. All right, and it also says responded in China were three times as likely to want their system of government to become more like the American system as less like it. <clears throat> okay? So you so based on based on what I just read by the article, it backs prophecy. Okay, because prophecy is pretty much occurring in the real world is reality and this is something that was this is something that was um spoken of by John the Revelator and the Heavenly Father was obviously speaking through him for him to speak these things and now we're living in that time of what he was saying we're living in the times of other things coming to pass what John the Revelator was saying okay so we're, we're, we're in biblical times though you got people that will say well the Bible it's, a, uh, it's, 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 a, uh, it's an old book that we, that we don't have to read anymore because it doesn't matter for today. It does still matter today. It very well matters today because the things that are happening right now on a global scale leads all the way back to the Bible. Right. You understand? So, and people say that because people don't want to deal with the idea of judgment or they just want to be ignorant. But we're not living in the day and age of being ignorant anymore, man. Now right. it's just to the point where the information you didn't want to know, now you got to know it. Go on, bro, read that. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to the, according her works in the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. Right, because what did America do? How was America established, man? America was established by the by her violence, by killing people. Okay? How many native Indians were, were killed when the Europeans came over there? It was hundreds of years ago. Okay, so, and also, you gotta also deal with slavery, too. Alright? You had a lot of children molested. Men and women were lynched on, on streets. Alright? Butt breaking. All kind of things that have, that, have been, that have been done in America, man, in, in its beginning stages. So because of its beginning stages, it was so violent, and so boring, and so nasty. Guess what? The end of that country is going to be the same way. It's going to be gory and nasty. Right. All right. When those missiles hit America, it's going, that's going that's going to end it all right there. Okay. So let's read on. And it says, the seven, how much, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen. 
and I'm wrong with them. Now going back to the um the article that I want to finish, I want to finish up a couple of points, and then we're gonna go back to the scripture. It says um um it says about 80% of Indians surveyed have a very or somewhat favorable view of the U.S. and the American people, in part because 70% of them have recently had a close friend or family member living in the U.S. Those surveyed in Germany and Japan, long-time U.S. allies, were at least enthusiastic about the U.S.-style democracy. More than half of Germans reported unfavorable view, yeah, because they're already a democratized society anyway, you know? But you have these other countries, these other poorer countries that favor the American democracy. All right? And, and either way you really look at it, on all aspects, point of view, the world is influenced by America in many ways. We can talk about the music, we can talk about the, um, the movies that come out, the actors that, 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 that be walking around in the midst. Okay? Now, like I, like I said, uh, what is it? Like I said last week, Let's say now you're a celebrity, you're a celebrity in Italy, no one's really gonna recognize you at all. Okay, no one's gonna know your name, even if you used to come down to, down here in England. No one's gonna recognize you. But if you're an American celebrity, take someone such as Denzel Washington. Take, have him go to one, uh, what is it, Central Pay or France somewhere. Or have him walking around down here, everybody's gonna recognize him. All right, because America has the, uh, has has the uh, the ability to to pretty much proliferate or evaporate their media around the world. Mm. Okay, and not only just that, but also promote their media figures to the utmost level. And that's why they're known as celebrities. The word celebrity goes back to the word celebration. The word celebration goes back to the word scene. So they exalt these people above and beyond, and that's why the people flock to them. Yeah, they call it the world stage, America, the world stage. Right, the world stage. Where people want to become, go to become famous. Yep, exactly. Like my man, uh, what's, what's the guy's name, man? Uh, uh, what's his name, man? Um, West African brother, man. Right, Idris Elba. That, that brother right there, you know, oh, yeah. he had to go, in order for him to really get recognized, he had to go to the, to the States to get recognized. Now everybody, everybody and their uncles and their grandmothers know Okay. Even down here, let's say you're a celebrity in England. You know, people, you know, you're gonna have very few people that's gonna know you, different countries there and there, but not as much as an American celebrity. Okay? Yeah. So it just goes to show you the, the, the influences or the, the powerful influences that America has. Going back to the precepts on what John the Revelator was saying. Okay, how this particular city or not city but in, empire will influence the world to the point where all of the kings and all of the people would then adapt, their, adapt to their ways. Okay? Go on. Verse 8, and it says, Therefore shall a plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Right, so it says the plagues are going to be, what is it, death, mourning and famine. Because a famine is going to be wrought in that land of America. A famine is going to be in, in the midst. Like the, your average store holds about what, four, three to four days worth of food. When those trucks can't afford to go up and down the streets to, to, get, you, to get your food down to your stores, what do you think is going to happen? And therefore you're going to have a thing called hyperinflation, which I haven't went into in a long time, where what happens is, is when, your, when your currency is majorly deducted, Guess what happens? All of your goods in the store skyrocket in price. Just like what happened to Germany. We had the Deutschmarks, it wasn't worth, um, what is it? The currency of the Deutschmarks wasn't worth anything. Okay? So that's what America's gonna experience. And therefore, these trucks are not gonna be able to, not gonna be able to afford to go up and down to provide the food that you need. And not just America, but hyperinflation is going to happen down here in England as well. Okay? Because what the most side is going to do, the most side is going to bring an end to this entire empire, this entire society. And that's what it's all about. It's all about preaching about the downfall of the system. Go on, bro. So Revelation 13 and 16. That's what the prophets did, go on, bro. And he causes both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and bond to right. receive a mark in their right hand or in their form. So how would he cause all both small and great? Because he saw the main influence of, of the earth, beginning with America. So he's going to cause all both small and great to receive that mark. What is that mark? The, the, uh, the what you call the RFID microchip. Like it's something that, uh, what is his, uh, what's his name, man? So Bach, he's, he's negating that, man. So Bach been negating the, the idea of the market of these being chip for ages. Okay, but then it's not, but like the brother, like my, like my guy on Kazakh said, it's not going to be a joke when the, when the market of beasts is mandated. Now they're going, now they're not going to know what to do. Because the thing with Zabak, Zabak, he's just kind of like, the spirit's telling me, man, he just want to keep his doctrine. You know, he don't want to come under nobody because his level of ego and pride. He don't want to accept, okay, great no stone got it right. I'm going to just, I'm going I'm to teach what they teach. But when it's all said and done, a lot of these individuals that's in Israel, they're going to switch up real fast. That pride and that ego is going to go out the window when that shit is mandated, man. That's right. All right? And a lot, and a lot of them guys that are following Zabak, they're going to be thinking, should I take the chip or should I not take the chip? All right? It's going to be in the back of their minds. Believe, believe you me. Go on, bro. And also Zabak, too. Because Zabak even said, oh, it's common sense um, not to put something under his skin. And the reason why he said that because in the back of his mind, he's thinking that it's, he's probably thinking in his mind that it's, it's probably true that the RFID should be the mark of the beast. But he's just teaching something else that is not more. And that no man might buy or sell, say he that has the mark or the name of the beast yeah. or the number of his name. Right, so that's it on that. We're going to get back to the main point. Just the going to touch on what you said. They, you had a brother do, do a video showing all his followers saying, look, I don't believe you about the market. Yeah. Like, all these comments. Like, yeah. Almost 50 comments of people saying, I don't believe you. I'm, I'm going to stop watching the video. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to such you up. That's what I'm saying, because people people got sense, man. And the thing with Zabak, Zabak is like in between. He's like in the middle. He don't, you know, he don't know if he should keep his own doctrine or teach what we teach him. And Zabak know what we teach him is the truth. Anyway, all of these Hebrew camps, Right? Which, you know, I mean, I don't have anything negative to say about them too tough, because they do push the truth. However, most of these camps, they know that we, they know that we're teaching the truth. They know that we're the top 10 guys when it comes to the word of the Lord. They know this. All right? But they don't want, they don't really want to accept and come under us because it's all pride. Jake got that pride, man. That's what it is, it's pride, man. But see, what, but see when a man has a level of pride, Guess what? The most I always brings the man down like that. Yeah. Okay? Go on, bro. Read that. You finished with that? Yeah. Okay. So back to the Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Therefore shall a place come in one day, death and mourning and famine. Right, death and mourning and famine, like I've explained. It's when them, when them, when them stores can't, um, when those trucks can't bring you food because of the hyperinflation or other things of that nature, there will be a famine indeed. And then in the hour of martial law, all of these stores and all of these different businesses are going to close down. So where are you going to get your food at? The only way you're going to be able to get your food is by you receiving that mark. So yeah, a famine is going to take place. And you better believe that the majority of the people, they're going to want to, they're going to, want to get back in line with the system under the intent to make, to, uh, you know, for them to um, think that life is going to be normal again. They're going to want to live a normal life again in the hour of martial law. So they're going to do anything what it means or what it takes to get that back. And if that means take the trip, then that's what they're going to do. Especially if their stomach is touching their intestines, man. Go on, bro. And she shall... And she shall be utterly burned with fire, mm -hmm. for strong is the Lord power who judgeth her. Right, so it says she shall utterly be burned with fire. Who is this her talking about? This is talking about an empire such as America, which is known as Old Daughter of Babylon, which, go, which ought to be destroyed, as it says. And how is she going to be burned with fire by those nuclear missiles? Those intercontinental ballistic missiles. That's what's going to blow that land to a no man's land, okay? Most of gonna flatten like a pancake, go on. Right. And the king of the earth, you have committed fornication and lived uh, deliciously with her, mm. shall bewail her. 
a lament for her. Yep. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. And it says, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, yeah. for in one hour is thy judgment come. Right, so it says, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And why are the nations are going to fall and behold her? Talking about America, because amongst these nations, they've made great amount of money dealing with this particular, um, this, this particular country here. And we talk about the import and the export situation. Okay, and I got the article right here. It says, um, U.S. imports by year for top five countries. Right? Five countries make up over half of all the U.S. imports. They got China, Canada, uh, Mexico, Japan, and Germany. The U.S. imported most goods from Canada until 2007 when China replaced our neighbor. To the north, in 2018, these five countries supplied 58% of 2.4 trillion in U.S. import of goods.